Welcome back to Village TV, and thank you for joining me. Today I'm talking to Chris Whiteford. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thank you, Sean. Always good to be here. <laughs> now, Chris is actually known as many things in the startup community, but one thing I do know is that he's passionate about startups, and he's a huge disruptor in this space. And we're going to share a bit about his involvement in startups and his new philosophy about how startups can be a lot more successful. So make sure you stay tuned to the end. Chris, talk to us a bit about your involvement in startups. Okay, well, I can give you the long version or the short version. We like the short then, version, I'll don't give, we, I'll give, I'll, Yeah, I'll give you the very short version. I, I got into startups completely by accident. It didn't, didn't happen overnight. And it really came, in, came about from 20-odd years playing in the financial services space where, you know, my whole involvement was how can I add value? And I fell into the startup arena from a number of points of view. Number one is from an investor myself. And also the fact that you know the you know startups and disruption go very much together. So financial services, in my mind, were probably one of the ironically one of the industries I've always wanted to target. So how do you disrupt an industry? We've got to start something up, and you've got to do things really differently. Yeah. So uh, I've kind of slipstream into this arena, and and that's uh, purely because you want to when you're in that industry or in that space, you see opportunity for change, doing things better. I know you talk a lot about being more customer focused. Yeah. And do you think startups have that edge? Is that is that what makes startups such an exciting space to be in? No, no question. I mean, what I love about startups is, I mean, I mean there, are, there are a number of things. Firstly, is that I love to question the status quo. I always believe there's answers and solutions to everything. Mm. And and I always say, you know, you know, from an economic point of view, it doesn't matter where you are in the cycle or what's going on where you are in the world. You know. You're always going to do well. You're always going to be able to add value if you keep focusing on customers. So, you know, the, the, the essence of any great startup is all about how can I serve more customers and add more value. Yes. And, and do it with some passion as well. And hence, I'm very attracted to that space because, you know, there's a, there's a lot of youth, there's vibrancy, there's an incredible amount of, uh, you know, new intelligence around technology and uh, there's a propensity to going yes as opposed to no. And let's, let's talk a bit about that because I know, you know, tackling is a big thing but as a startup yourself you might be asking, um, I think a lot of people, the reason they get into startups is because they want to be, what you advocate and what you push in startups is time free. Totally, time but, free. But I think a lot of people start a business and you might be business and you go, hell, I'm not time free. <laughs> Yeah. And and that's the biggest thing. You basically buy a business. Yeah. You only end up with longer working hours, right? So how is you as an individual, how are the people out there, how do they become time-free right. in their business? Great. That's a great question. And it's a conundrum and it's difficult. So, you know, hold, hold on to this one. I, 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 I guess, you know, going, you know, flipping back, you know, 20 years back plus for me, I, you know, when I got into business, it was all about how can I be busy, 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 busy and earn more and more and more, more money which is definitely a road that you can go down. The problem with that particular route is it breaks the fundamental rule of the disruption scalable industry, which is you know being able to leverage yourself, scale, and exit. So Leverage, scale, and, and exit. exit. Leverage exit. is? So leverage is something you can leverage. In other words, it's something that people want, like software or... You don't want to be selling something that nobody wants. So you've got to make sure people want what you have to offer. Absolutely. Yeah. Second is scale. And that's, scale. I guess, the capabilities go from that's one the, to 10,000. Yeah, that's the vertical. So the, the vertical could be, it could be, you know, I heard of a lady in the US in garden homes, believe it or not, the vertical was enormous. The market was small, but the vertical was huge in terms of the ability to climb into the hemisphere. And that's, I guess, making a product, be it a pen, but yeah. being, not being able to just make one, but to be able to make 10,000 quickly. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, great. And the last one? And the last one is exit. Exit. So now, why is exiting important? So exit, to me, is everything. And pretty well my sole focus every day. And I would say, you know, what, you know, business is fundamentally all about having relationships. So with having any great relationship... The irony of a relationship is if you can't exit from it, you can't grow it. And as, and as I always say to anybody coming to me with a great idea or a business idea, is I would say, tell me your exit strategy because the, the fuel and the energy is all in the exit. Once you have everybody focused well, 
to the outcome, mm. you can then scale it exponentially. Let's talk about and what, the exit. And what, and, what, and, what, and what I mean by that is that doesn't mean to say that you exit the business and you have to bail from it. Yes. You can stay in it. But I, for me, as a business owner, I'd rather bail the company and then be offered a seat back on the board as a consultant or whatever. Yeah. So I could stay there for the next 20 years. The point being is that with a successful exit, three things happen. Firstly, is that you get all the relationships. You get more relationships. Yep. The second thing that happens is that you get all the money. You definitely get all the money, I yep. can assure you. And the third thing that happens is you get opportunity. So there's, you're basically giving yourself more opportunity to do more work elsewhere on a bigger volume. Is Absol- that what you're saying? Abs- absolutely. You can see, and you can scale. Once, you, once you've exited one company, you know, the, the greatest difficulty is actually exiting a company, sure. Most people I know in business have never exited a company, never. It's quite amazing when you think of it. So when someone comes to you with the business idea and says, I want to exit, yeah. what, do you, what do you want to hear from them? What do you want them to say, what's saying to you to make you excited about investing in that okay, business? Okay, yeah. So, the, well, well, the first thing is, yeah, I definitely want to talk about when we exit. In other words, how, how are we going to grow it? Okay. What's, why are customers going to come to us and how can we get to it? Now, the fundamental reason why I want to hear that is that a small, I'm in the small startup business world. I'm not in high volume, fast moving consumables. My role is to roll something up for the Googles of this world to handle. They can much better handle the customers. Remember what I said before about yeah. being able to serve customers? My goal is to serve more customers. Okay. So in other words, the business structure has got to be created for the next person. So a small business and large business, they're two different ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Very few people these days will ever build a small business into a large business. It's usually done on trade sale, okay. not so much on IPAs and all these other fancy things people talk about. So to me, it's you know the exit is critical. The other thing, the last thing I just want to say is that you know we we obviously get on very well with one another now, but I want to know that I'm not stuck with you for the next 50 years. <laughs> so I'd like to have that conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And might, I, I, he, you might want to go to Africa and I might want to become a you know a Himalayan priest or something. Yeah. So it's great to have those, those cards on the table. And I guess people change. People change in business, people change in life. You have different desires, different ambitions. 100%. And so I think having a good plan, as you say, an exit allows you that flexibility, allows you to know that you're not stuck digging dirt for the, for the next 20 years, but you can, your goal is to dig dirt for, let's say, what, three years, four years, five yeah, years? Yeah, about a thousand days. I, I generally have about a thousand days in my hemisphere, so it's kind of like, how can we get out of this in a thousand days? Right. That's what I say to people. How right. can we get out of this? How can we grow it and pass it on to serve more customers? Yeah, and I guess also the nice thing is if you go, I can get out of this business when I've got 10,000 paying customers. That yeah. gives you a goal. Absolutely. It gives you a focus. It gives you a dedication. You, you know where you have to get to to break even or whatever it is or to get Google interested in your product. Um, 100%. And it's also great to tell your team and your staff and so on, which is I'm, I'm a great believer in you know, the introduction of share um, bonus schemes, call it whatever you like. Get everybody involved, whether they're for one week or for three years there you go you know, there should be plenty there's there's enough to spread around to take this to the next level so you get your exit right yeah. and that makes you time free is that what we're saying if you do it well you will definitely become time free there's no 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 question I've been in enough exits now to say one good time free you'll probably never have to work for the rest of your life what I mean by that is not going out and buying 50 Ferraris I'm just saying Time free means that you set your assets up yeah. so you don't actually have to go and do nine to five ever again, period. But you can still work. And I think this thing, you've got the opportunity, you've got the relationships. Absolutely. So you can go work on other cool things that you're more excited about or passionate about and doing your thing, right? 100%. 100%. Or you might want to take a break or you might want to, like a very good friend of mine, James, he, he went off to the US and he spent time in Silicon Valley. He's, he's in Los Angeles. And he comes back to Australia now pumping with new ideas, new relationships. Rolodex is just ticking over with names that you know you only dream about. So he brings tremendous value by the, by the nature of the fact that he's liberated himself from having to do stuff 
He doesn't want to do anything. He doesn't want to have to. He can do what he likes. So let's go. Let's wrap this up. Business owners out there, you're listening to this, you're engaged, you're excited. Chris, what would you recommend they do right now to make sure that they take their business where they are, they're working 12 hours a day, you're looking at me right now nodding your head, you're working 12 hours a day, what are you going to say to them? What would you tell them to do right now to work on their exit and how to get to the point where they become time free? Okay, well, very singly, what, this is what I would say, that whatever's going on, push everything aside and focus on one thing. So, in other words, you've got to have one sole purpose. If you've got two, and we talk about exits, it's never going to happen because as a great mentor that I work with says to me every single time I see him, he says, if you're chasing two rabbits, you'll never catch either one. You've got to have one rabbit you're chasing, period. There we go. What's your one rabbit? That's a good way to end this show. I look forward to hearing. Tell us, write to us, contact Chris. Chris loves hearing about startups, loves sharing his um, amazing knowledge when it comes to being a disruptive startup owner. And he's been there, he's done it, and he can certainly assist. Chris, thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you, thank you for back on Village yeah, TV. Anytime. Make sure you subscribe. Chris is a regular here, and he'll be sharing some great tips coming up. So stay tuned, and we'll see you back on Village TV very soon. Cheers Fantastic. for now. Fantastic.